Hey guys, it's me, Danny, and today I'm bringing you the one-year review of the Mustang Mach-E California Route 1 Edition. Now, I meant to do this video sooner at 10,000 miles, at 11,000 miles, at 12,000 miles on Earth Day, uh, all these different things, uh, and they were just way too long. And I want to make these a little bit smaller, but I'm going to make a couple of them. So what I want to talk to you guys about today is the California Route 1 Edition this particular trim what i like and what i don't like about it and yes there are stuff that i wish would be a little bit different but luckily most of it's software upgradable we'll figure that out now just jumping in what the california route one edition this is a 21 model comes with is the extended range battery and with the extended range battery i wanted the distance on here and i wanted to kind of counter that a uh, battery degradation that's eventually going to happen I am happy to say that I live in a warm, hot climate, okay? Warm to hot. Our summers are year round, or better yet, our winters are about a month or two long, okay? Now, it's 100 plus degrees today. It's usually 100 plus degrees most of the summer going into 110s, 115s. I just wanna give you as a baseline. One thing you're gonna notice about EVs when you watch all these reviews from different people from different parts of the US, some people talk about warming up the battery, some people don't. In California, we don't need that. Number two is that EVs get better uh, range, get better uh, performance from a warm battery, and we are the perfect climate for it here in the Central Valley. With that said, this is rated at 305 miles, and I've been getting consistently 330 to 340 miles to a full charge. Now, I don't always charge it full. I don't recommend people charge it full um, all the time. When I do recharge, I usually recharge to 85%, and I'll travel, I'll get back home around 60%, and I'll do that. Right now, I'm at 39%, and I probably won't charge it tonight. I'll wait another couple days. Uh, I'll get this down to maybe 20, 30 miles on there, somewhere around there before I plug it in again. So battery life, great. Distance, great. The other parts of this car that were, were noted, aero wheels, they look fine. Honestly, one thing I would like to see is aftermarket aero wheels. Uh, I've only found like one or two vendors out there, but there's really not a whole lot. There's going to be a huge segment for aero wheels make them start going crazy because uh i would like just one thing this is the wheels on this car are mixed between like a aluminum and a plastic on there um i wish they just made it all matte the same color so you wouldn't tell the difference but either way i like the way it looks i like the shoes being black with the rest of the car being gray if that makes any sense and uh yeah overall not a deal breaker, but I do want to point that out to tire manufacturers, wheel manufacturers. Let's get going on that. Uh, beyond that, the other things that are in this car, the fit and finish. Now, this is more probably applying to the rest of the, the lineup on here, minus the GTs because they have the special seats. But this is a very comfortable car. I had no issue uh, adjusting this to my liking. I've never had an issue on a road trip where I feel like I need to move a lot or get up or anything like that. So overall, very comfortable car. Sitting in the driver's seat, it's very comfortable. Sitting in the back seat is very comfortable as well. Now, the thing that you will notice, it does have a glass roof. And I personally thought, ooh, this is gonna be tough. I was already looking for like a mesh cover, things like that, because I didn't know how to live with it. I've been in a car like that before. I've had a moon roof, I've had a sunroof, I've had all those things, and uh, they've never been an issue, but this is much larger, so I thought it might have been. And I'm Happy to say, not an issue. Again, our temperature here in the summer, 110, 115 is not uncommon to hit. And I don't feel that heat radiating from the glass. I don't feel that, that sun beating on me. And I'm right here, maybe because there's this uh, console on top that kind of covers a little bit of it, but I don't have an issue with it. The UV protection is great. Now, what I will tell you though, it does get hot, not in the cabin, but the actual glass. So sometimes I like to drive like this a little bit and I'll put my fingers on the glass and I will burn the tips of my fingers because it does get hot. Um, but 
again, I don't feel the heat coming from it. So it's kind of one of those things, not a big deal. Just don't touch the, the glass if you're over 100 degrees outside. The things I would change though, this, this particular model, the 21, did not come with the power lift gate. I feel like it should have. It's on the premium model, I get it, but I just, I don't know. I feel like that would have been a better choice. And let's talk about the 22 and newer models than heated seats that now have come out on the newer Mustang Mach-E's. In the California Route 1, they put heated seats in it. I just told you, our winter probably lasts one to two months if that, we do not need heated seats in the car in California. And it's a California Route 1, just saying. Now, if they were gonna do anything to it, I would have preferred ventilated seats because that would be um, incredible. Luckily though, the combat to this is that you do have the ability to start your car remotely through the Ford Pass app. Uh, so it works well. So yeah, if, if they had ventilated seats, that would make more sense to me. Now the frunk is awesome. Uh, I use it pretty often. The only thing I do not like is I have to hit this lever down here twice to pop it open. Now there's other cars that allow you to do it on the dash. I don't know, maybe the update did come through for that. Let me see here, let's see if I go to access. Uh, no, no option there yet. There is a software update coming. Uh, now the thing that I don't like on this 21 model is that Blue Cruise, I bought it in July. It was supposed to come out November, then it was supposed to come out January and then May and then April. And we're in July and now I got a letter in the mail saying, yes, Blue Cruise will be updated. You could take it to your dealership or the update will hit you in the next like four weeks or so. I'm taking it to the dealership this coming week and I'll do a review on the Blue Cruise here pretty soon. But it's been pushed out for so long that my free trial of the internet doesn't work, but Blue Cruise will need you to be paying for the modem fee in order to use it to keep updated on it. So there's a charge for it, even though they're saying they're giving you Blue Cruise complimentary because eventually it seems like they're gonna have a subscription-based Blue Cruise, which I'm not a big fan of. One of the things that I have a little tick on is, and you've probably seen this in the news too, is uh, digitally locking your physical car. If it's my car, my payments, everything in this car belongs to me, right? So you have a manufacturer like BMW that is charging people to activate their heated seats. Those seats are in their car. Now, if it's a lease, okay, there's a little bit of difference. Okay, fine. But if you're buying a car and I have to pay additional to unlock a feature of the car, I don't like that. Tesla did the same thing in the past. They gave one battery size to all models, but they call them different model sizes. And now that there was an incident where someone bought it, they got replaced the battery and they locked the battery out. They're asking 4,500 bucks to unlock the rest of the range from the battery. That's crazy to me. And here, let's narrow it down to Blue Cruise. Blue Cruise is eventually gonna be paid for. Uh, it seems like that it's going that direction. And Tesla is selling you an additional thing one time and you're you're over it's a little expensive 10 grand is a lot um for their version this one i don't know how much it's going to cost hopefully it just remains free and hopefully i just pay the modem rental fee type of thing the internet connectivity of this car and i'm okay with that but you're not getting that many features by having it i'm getting wi-fi i'm getting my phone with the uh, warner media ride you know some free movies and stuff probably never going to use because I have internet on my phone and I could watch whatever I want from there. I get it. I could give my kid a tablet. They could do that. Uh, I don't know. It's a, it's an odd thing. My only thing I'm trying to say is that subscription based, anything in your car, if you're going to do that, give us access to it. Give me the ODB2 port. Give me access to the sensors and let me find a third party certified third party at least so that they could run the sensors and give me that blue cruise, give me that auto drive, give me that uh, object avoidance. All right, I'm off my high horse on that one. I'm off my soapbox. So beyond that though, I love this model. I love this trim. Um, if I were to get a newer version of this car, I would definitely go with the four wheels, um, four wheel drive California route one edition. I still wouldn't go premium. I do not need the 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 big audio system i do not need the range reduction that it provides um yes i would love the power lift gate but it's not a big deal other than that it's comfortable and if i wasn't going to get another california route one edition i'd probably get the gt model 
and that was i was trying to keep this under 10 minutes obviously i did not succeed but um i'm probably gonna drop another video simultaneously or a couple days later hope to see you there go ahead hit like hit subscribe for me leave me a comment good bad or ugly whatever it is i try to get to them when i can and i will see you next time